It's Morbin time! <laughs> Greetings, mere mortals, and welcome back to Monster Month! You know, there have been a lot of different monsters in G.I. Joe over the years. Ghosts, Cthulhu's, zombies... But do you know what they never had? Vampires! Well, I can't be sure they didn't appear in any of the modern comics. I wouldn't know, I'm a ghost of the 80s! And in the 80s, G.I. Joe actually sidestepped the issue by having Vlad the Impaler, you know, Dracula featured, well, his corpse anyway, but not have him be a vampire. He was just a dude whose DNA was used to create Serpentor. Well, it's time to put the vamp in vampire, as we see if the Marvel character of Morbius could work in the G.I. Joe universe. Vamp in vampire... that was a terrible pun that didn't even make sense. Yes, Morbius. Even though all the jokes and memes about that terrible movie bombing ended months ago, so we can't write the hype. Look, this show was never about the cutting edge of internet trends. We talk about 40-year-old toys for crying out loud. So, just who is Morbius? And we are talking about the comic character. I haven't seen the movie, nobody has, that was the whole joke. Well, Michael Morbius is a doctor. And look, if you're a scientist in the Marvel Universe, you might as well find the nearest spandex store, because you are going to end up a superhero or a supervillain eventually. In this case, Morbius had a rare and fatal blood disease that he tried to cure with, what else? Vampire bat DNA and other stuff. This worked, in the sense that it turned him into a living vampire who needed to drink fresh blood to survive. But hey, he also got superpowers, so it isn't all bad. He is super strong, has enhanced regeneration abilities, especially when he drinks blood. Though, it's nowhere near the level of Wolverine, and he can hypnotize people. He can also sort of fly, though it's more gliding. What's interesting is that he's not a traditional vampire. He's still alive rather than being undead, and got his condition through science. No real vampires were involved. That means you could just drop him into the G.I. Joe universe without needing to have any other kind of vampire in there. It could just be him. Which suits this video just fine. You could keep his origin story pretty much the same. The Chosen Cobra would get wind of a dark creature stalking the night, leading to the Joes trying to stop it and Cobra trying to find it for their own ends. Maybe after they learn all about Morbius, the Joes could offer to try and cure him. While Cobra might offer the same while secretly wanting to experiment on him to create their own vampire army. Will he get cured? Or will he become a dark ally of the Joes, ready to morb all over Cobra? Who knows? That's for you to decide! All this would, of course, require a toy. And luckily, such an action figure exists! So meet Morbius. This figure was released in 2016 with... um... body parts. They probably reused stuff in there knowing Hasbro. This toy was part of the Marvel Legends 4-inch line. And first impressions? Destro wants his outfit back! Okay, I know Destro didn't exactly pioneer that disco look, but the similarities are striking! It is a very stereotypical vampire outfit, isn't it? 
There isn't that much detailing on the figure. Though he does have a six-pack and pecs because he's a superhero. Doesn't really go with his thin face and sunken in cheeks, though. Even so, I have to admit his head is the most detailed and impressive part of the sculpt. The articulation is okay, but nothing special. The head is on a ball joint for full movement, and his shoulders and arms have the same joints as a G.I. Joe figure. His torso doesn't swivel though, and there's no wrist articulation. The legs are pretty good, with joints at the hips, knees and ankles. Though they are quite thin, so getting him to stand up or pose can be a bit of a hassle. Lastly, he's got a very small batwing cape on his back. Ah, look how adorable it is! Nemesis Enforcer would be proud! It's supposed to be for gliding, but that little thing isn't helping with anything. Overall, it's a pretty cool figure. He's a bit taller than the average G.I. Joe, but since he's a monster, that works well enough. That should wrap things up, but I can't not mention his depiction in the Spider-Man cartoon. Because it's so weird and kinda resembles the G.I. Joe cartoon. He's still a vampire, but he doesn't drink blood. In fact, he doesn't drink at all. He absorbs plasma through suction cups on his hands. Like in the G.I. Joe cartoon, the Spider-Man one was very careful when it came to showing violence. So they also had lasers instead of guns, and practically nobody ever died. Except Uncle Ben. That guy always dies. Can you believe they even had the Punisher in the series? You know, the guy whose whole shtick is killing criminals. And that was Morbius. I'd say he could work with G.I. Joe. Let him put his fangs in some cobras. Or gently massage some plasma out of them, I guess. Until next time, mere mortals. <laughs> And you will like, you will subscribe, you will do it all! Hey everybody, Editing Timmer here. I just want you guys to know that photographing a vampire toy in full sunlight wasn't actually a joke I came up with. I just happened to be photographing during a time of the day when the sunlight hit my setup. So it really was just a freaky coincidence. Though I admit I had a good laugh when I realized what I had done.